So I've got a big smile on my face because finally after six installs, this latest upgrade has made the difference that I've been looking for for that long. I'm sure you've seen the thumbnail and the title so you know what's going on. Let's go into the video and take a look at the install. So here we are then off to Brookwells. I got the call to say that the springs have arrived. And I do have to say, you know, a lot of the time these days you do get things delivered to you through the mail. And sometimes I do that. But also it's nice to go and get things in person and actually chat to a human being every now and then. This is where I got the springs from. Obviously, every time you come in, you've got a lot of stuff on the shelves. And it's nice to sort of have a little look around. And also there's a massive warehouse full of stuff as well. These are the springs out the front there. Can't wait to get them on and actually finally get it sorted. While I was out and about, went into Halfords, our classic pretty terrible car store in the UK, um, known as Halfords if you're from anywhere other than the UK, to get some axle stands. Mine were broken, I'll mention that later. Got the three uh, ton ones, these are ratcheting ones, and uh, they're just going to help with the install today. So let's get cracking, get home, and uh, let's take a look at these. Right, so there we go, gonna get them out of the box, have a look at them, can tell they're nice and heavy, and now we're gonna sit down, have a talk about it, and instead of looking at my boring garage, let's try an AI background, see if you can tell the difference. So as you would have just seen, I just unboxed these new OME springs. These are plus 500 kilo heavy duty ones for the rear from Brookwells. I picked them up the other day. I popped in to go and grab them in person and had a chat with them about sort of the setup because the other day I picked up some 300 kilo ones thinking that they'd be right, a good compromise. But it actually turned out that they were not heavy duty. They're sort of a medium duty put them on and they were no better than the ones before I would say they're great if you've got less load you know roof tent and camper but for me with the roof tent and the camper on it was all a bit heavy going around corners at sort of 50 miles an hour on a b road it was all just feeling a little bit too sort of out of kilter so for me I've opted to go for these 500 kilos with the option to also go for some adjustable airbags that will go in the center but we'll look at that in the future make sure that these are all okay for now and if they're not quite enough stopping the wallowingness do that in the future but I'm gonna put these in and I'm sure these are gonna make a hell of a difference if you can't tell it is absolutely roasting out here uh, it's gonna be a lot of uh, sort of shadow and contrast today because it is boiling if you jam that in there that's a good chock as well So at BHE Autos with Ben, it's a lot easier doing it on the ramp, that's why I did it last time, but I thought I'd do this one myself. Just getting up in the air is a palaver as it is, and I've used the uh, high lift jack, which is not the most recommended thing, but to get it high enough onto the axle stands with the chassis, is what you have to do. Put them both in place now with a piece of plywood to protect the chassis and drop it down now. Both the wheels are off, so we're ready to get started with the suspension after about 45 minutes. <laughs> Always keep your face out of the way of the jack. Lower it down gently, click it. It can fly back, so if you keep your face out of the way of it, that's where a lot of accidents happen. I really would recommend not using a high lift jack at home. These are emergency use case only, normally. Yeah, it's sitting down onto the piece of wood there. Then the jack lets go a bit, there you go. Nice and safe on the axle stands. If you've got a lift at home, which I very much doubt, I say use that, but this I hope will work. Just got the axle drooping there. Um, we'll undo the spring supports now. Just need to get them out. As you can see there, Boris has got a very janky setup there. Had it since I <laughs> bought Boris four years ago. This is just the bottle jack I keep inside the vehicle at all times. For the moment like this, when you're on the road, you need to change your wheel. <laughs> But this, what I can do is um, lift up the axle and then compress the shock a little bit. And uh, hopefully that means we can remove the nut for the shock so that the axle will drop down a bit further. Should be good. Right, try the 17. It wasn't a 17, let's hope it's a 19. Sometimes you have to hold the shock stop it from spinning but if you've got a rattle gun it's a lot easier 
that. Try and keep a note of the order of the uh, bushes and nuts. Now, we release the pressure from the jack and try and stay out of the way a little bit. Slowly does it. My feet are out of the way, they may not look it. Good, that's exactly what we want. Nice and low. The spring comes out a bit. Release even more. Oi, there we go. Push it down a bit. Ooh! <laughs> There's the spring. So it's popping out there, so that's handy. A better view. Just have to undo this very janky setup for the spring retainer. So if I put my foot on here and then try and release that, I'm sure that'll work. Just remembered in Halfords I was gonna try and buy a pry bar. Hmm. Hmm. That'd been helpful. There you go. You need a pry bar when you've got a jack handle. Sweet! That's one out. <laughs> one quarter of the puzzle. So here's the two springs side by side. Uh, this is the old one that's just come out. Actually looks pretty clean still, which is impressive. Just has the dust in it from all the dry summer driving. Um, and there's the new one. Um, you can tell it's definitely a chunkier gauge. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can really feel, it's probably gonna be quite hard to show it, but there's a lot of spring in there. And then you go to this one, you can definitely feel it's just pushing back a lot harder. Um, the old ones I had were, there's a lot more compression of coils up here, and that was with the genuine Land Rover one. This one's still got a nice amount of spacing all the way through, um, but hopefully that means it's gonna be nice and supportive, but with a, a comfy ride. So we'll have to see, hey? Literally, this is where our problem came in the first place. There's so many different numbers from where you're getting it from, their numbers. It's worth speaking to, you know, someone you're getting it from. So I spoke to the guys at Brookwells and they definitely helped me out. And uh, yeah, it's definitely handy to be able to have someone else's sort of opinion and chat with someone about it, because uh, there's so many different options. So there you go, that's nicely seated now. It wasn't as hard as I thought. Just went in there, just a bit of, you know, you just have to try different techniques. I definitely wouldn't recommend copying me ever because none of these are the safest ideas, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how I do it. <laughs> so basically what I'm doing now is putting the jack back under there like I did earlier, and then just jacking that axle back into position for the shock. Uh, the pin's actually moved out of the hole for the axle there so you just need to make sure that that's lined up nicely So real no much difference from the original look. We just know that there is a bigger bore coil in there. And when I picked these up from Brookwells a little while ago, um, they definitely made a difference when I had the original springs in as well. But I think this in combination would be great. We'll see what it's like and then we'll go for airbags if we need to. But yeah, happy that those are like that. And let's go to the other side.
So basically what we're going to do is give it a bit of a test and see how it's feeling. Um, at the moment we're on a sort of 60 mile an hour B road and it would just be good to see the difference really. Um, I'm not going to do so much of a sort of firmness of the ride test now, just going to do a sort of wallowy test. Um, I expect it to be quite a rough ride, it's heavy duty, uh, but that's better to be safe than sorry on the sort of curvier uh, B roads like this. Just did a little bit of a test then, I think it's feeling better already. <laughs> okay, cool, right. So even just from the first few corners, I can tell that I've made the right decision already. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with that. Before, it just was feeling, getting to the point where I was actually going around corners where I was feeling slightly, not, I wouldn't say dangerous, but getting to the point where you're feeling that you're on the edge of like control loss because the front wheel almost felt like it was lifting because the front suspension was quite stiff and the rear was loose. So the back seemed to be dropping and the front almost was like lifting off and you had to sort of lean against it especially on these sort of 50 60 mile an hour b roads going around corners it was where they was really having problems so i'm super happy with the reaction of that straight away and i'm not even sure if we're going to have to put the, sa the sandbags airbags in just yet so i'm not sure about that first impressions the first five minute drive uh i'm happy with it so far just you go around the corner there's a bit of movement but it doesn't wallow over which is great and that sort of compliance i'm happy with um and i'm hoping that it's going to be the sort of amount right amount of weight that means that the suspension isn't too stiff for the setup i'm approaching a roundabout now which is a good way i'm going to do uh, that to head home but yeah i'm definitely happy with it so far it's a real good feeling to to not be wallowing around way too much uh, let's see if these cars will actually stop. Yeah, wow, even around there. That's a tight roundabout. Before, you'd have to have slowed down around there to really stop it from leaning over. So now I'm really happy with that. Do a little bit of a test there. There's a squirrel on the road. Get out of the way. <laughs> Ruining my test. Right, okay. Yeah, no, I'm happy with this. Really happy. Um, should have done that in the first place, but very happy now I don't know if you'll be able to tell from the GoPro underneath or from the shots I'm getting now but there's the movement is there side to side but it's controlled with the OME shocks and now these 500 kilo springs it moves but it's held which is just brilliant I'm so happy the amount of times I've changed I think it's coming up to probably three quarters of a year since I did my first change because I was unhappy with it this time I'm not just saying that for the video I've actually got a smile on my face because after all these changes maybe five or six different installs this is finally it and obviously for you for your setup it would be different depending on how much weight you're carrying but with me I'm really happy about this right now it's really good so I'm gonna wrap up the video there I want to thank Brooke Wells for helping me out with this supplying the springs there always helping out on the phone there which is absolutely fantastic really happy with this install what i'm going to do is spend a few more days a few more weeks go to billing go do some off-road do some motorway miles and work out if i do want to add the airbags as well i think it would be a good addition because obviously with passengers with fully laden we haven't got anything in apart from the, just the camper i reckon that would be a, uh, a good decision to go for those but i'm gonna make sure to test these first it's always good to test and see how they go so i hope you've enjoyed the video today um, like and subscribe if you want to and um, hopefully I'll see you next time.